Earlier this year, media from all over the world have mentioned the Nefertiti hack. You see the New York Times here. It's the bu about a bust of Queen Nefertiti. Here she is, 3,000 years old, uh, mentioned to be the most beautiful woman ever. It's on display in the Neues Museum in Berlin. And these two German artists have secretly made a 3D scan of the, uh, of the Queen by walking around with this Microsoft Connect scanner hidden below the blue scarf. However, some doubts have been mentioned. You, you, when you walk around it with this scanner, it said that it's impossible to make a detailed scan like uh, they published. Here's a scan that it published, as you can see, very detailed. It's freely available for, for download for anyone. It's available as OBE file and we download it and converted it to STL file using the Rhino software. Well, it's a great geometry, so we decided to use it for a next Desproto tutorial lesson. Uh, on rotation axis machining. Uh, the basics of rotation axis machining have been uh, covered in the Venus tutorials. Here, here we will focus on these more advanced topics. In Desk Proto, I will use the rotary wizard. Let me start it to create the base project. The machine already is correct. Here's the rotary wizard. I start it first thing obviously is load the SCL file and here I have a version, this is the original Nefertiti, I have a version that has already been scaled and rotated. Uh, scaling was needed as the original uh, model is far too large for our small uh, machine so we need to scale down to about 20% of the full size. When you can machine full size the result will of course show much more detail than our small model. Here it is. You can see the cap is pointed to the left as on my machine uh, the left is where the rotary table is and I want to have the largest part connected to the rotary table with a large support block. I'll come back on that later. Um, okay, no more. Yeah, one thing I want to mention, it says a cylinder block. My block uh, is in fact rectangular, so in this direction the size can be a bit smaller than the cylinder that has been mentioned here. Okay, I'll go next and there I can set the support blocks and a few more things. As said, I want the support block on the left to be a bit larger, so I'll make them custom here and for the left bridge I go to the detail settings and I already thought I want to make it minus 10 and plus 10 and minus 10 and plus 10. Okay, here we are. So the uh, statue will be safely attached uh, to the rotary table. On the right, I always also want to make a small changes and I want to shift the block upwards or to a higher Y value a bit. So from minus 3 to 9 and from minus 6 to 6, that's okay, more is not needed. So this is a better position for the support block over here. Okay, uh, one more remark about the milling depth is needed. Here you can see the center line of the block. This means that the actual geometry at this location is lower than the center line, so the milling depth should be a bit more than this suggested half the block. Still, I won't change it as uh, tool positions below zero. Uh, for those tool positions, it's very important that the work P0 point has been accurately set as any small deviation will be very clearly visible otherwise. And on our small machine, it's very difficult to set an accurate uh, zero point. Okay, next, uh, this is for the roughing. 
a uh, six millimeter ball nose cutter. We have a special wood cutter, which is ideal for cutting wood uh, as uh, metal cutters tend to become too hot. Uh, I start with the skin, half a millimeter, and a layer height for roughing five millimeters. Then I set the precision as the skin setting will influence the precision values. This is okay as a toolpath distance. Strategy can be parallel, but we want to change that anyway. So no more, the, I won't calculate it here as we need to make more changes anyway. That was a roughing for finishing. I won't, won't not, will not make any changes here. We'll do that later. Uh, and we'll go to finish and make some more uh, settings in the operation parameters. Some more detailed settings here is what I want to do. The strategy I said I want to change it as I want my toolpath to be along the uh, around the A axis, so going around the geometry and from the right to the left, as the on the left side the uh, statue is connected to my rotary table, so reversed starting on the right. Uh, what more for roughing? I want a ramping angle, but it's already there, no problem. And then on this one, I want uh, a very high reduction, feed rate reduction for high chip loads, as the rotary table is not very powerful. So I want to reduce to 20% here. Okay, and then we can start calculating, which obviously will take some time here. Calculation took too much time as I forgot to switch the finishing off and I was interested in fact only in the roughing. So as you can see the toolpath will go down in layers of five millimeters outside minus five, minus ten, etc. The support block is left connected to the machine. What more can I say? Here's the support block on the right for the tailstock. And okay, we can save this toolpath and send it to the machine. Uh, call it roughing. The next things that need to be done are the toolpath for the semi-finishing operation and the finishing operation. 
roughing we did that with a cutter of six millimeter diameter my finishing will be with a cutter of two millimeters diameter and uh, the the difference is too large so i want to add a semi finish with a three millimeter cutter i'll copy this operation uh, move it up one step move up and call it semi finish semi finish yes as I said a three millimeter bullnose cutter yes a distance of about five toolpath per millimeter strategy again around a but reverse is not needed here as the forces are very small i uh, want to keep a very small skin so roughing skin of half a millimeter now is reduced to 0 0.2 and in fact that's all that needs to be done for my semi finish operation and finishing then is a cutter of two millimeters again a ball nose i do this quite quickly as this all is very basic still again around a no roughing at all no skin so we're all set and we can calculate the tool path for semi finish and for finish which obviously will take quite a time Okay, here are the resulting toolpaths for semi-finish and for finish. For now we'll focus on finish as this image tells me that we have a problem. Here is a vertical surface, a high vertical surface, and the roughing operation has left half a millimeter of roughing skin over this complete surface. Well, now my semi-finish cutter of three millimeters has a limited cutting length. And so here on the upper uh, upper part, the shaft of my cutter will try to remove the roughing skin, which is obviously not possible. So we have a, a problem, and I will solve that by adding an extra operation, which will machine this vertical surface using water lines. As the water lines go down from uh, from the top to the bottom they can remove this skin without any problem and then uh, in fact for the semi finish operation we can make the area to be sheet to be machined a bit smaller in order to exclude this complete surface okay first the waterline operation I will copy the semi finish operation I will move it up two times move up as it needs to be done before uh, the real fi the semi finish, uh, and then I'll rename it to water lines. The strategy obviously need, need, obviously needs to be water line. One millimeter is okay. I do not want a roughing skin over here, and I want only this part, this area to be machined. So here we are. These are the settings for the water lines. And for the semi finish, I will make the area to be machined a bit smaller as well, like you can see here. Okay, and now we can start calculating again. And here are the resulting toolpath. The uh, semi finish operation does not include the vertical walls and before that the vertical wall is machined using water lines going from top to bottom that's it on this geometry no other high steep vertical walls are present so we can save these the, the toolpath for these two operations in one nc file as they share the same cutter so save and see and we call it semi finish it was already there but we will super see that and send it to the milling machine
Okay, back to Desk Pro Tool. Uh, before changing the cutter and proceeding to the finishing operation, there's one more issue we need to deal with in this geometry, and that's the undercuts. As you can see here at the ear, the, surface, the result here will be a vertical surface, while in the geometry, uh, well, a cavity is present. Uh, this is an undercut because in Desproto, while rotation axis machining, the cutter will remain positioned above, exactly above the rotation axis. So at Y is zero, and thus it can't reach behind the ears. Such undercut is present at the two ears, and also here at Nefertiti's chin. We will look at the chin now the neck now and we later will deal with the ears. Okay, what we will do to still machine the geometry here is uh, add plain XYZ toolpath, so three axis toolpath. In order to do so we need to add two parts here, one for the uh, left side and one for machining from the right side, from the other side. So I'll start with adding one part here we are. Uh, some changes in the part parameters are needed. Left side, uh, as you can see, the zero point is not the same for uh, this part and for rotation axis machining. So I'll go into the part parameters. First of all, I say use the same support bridges as used for rotary machining. And in translate, I select none for Y and for Z. And as a result, the zero point is at exactly the same position for this XYZ part as for the rotary machining part. So that means that a toolpath for those, both parts can be combined on the same model and will be nicely aligned. Okay, next in the operation parameters. Uh, first of all, a smaller cutter, the same 3 millimeter cutter, a bit higher position. Here we are for a strategy. I want to use water lines from top to bottom. For roughing, I want to switch off layers. And oops, this is not possible as this is the first operation of this part. And normally, for a first operation, roughing layers are needed. However, in this case, the material already has been removed while rotation axis machining. So I want to switch off the layers. In order to solve that, I use a rather simple trick. I simply add an operation in this part. Uh, this one is called chin. And the first operation will be called dummy, as I won't use it make it invisible. So there's a dummy operation here and its only function is that this one is now the second operation and now I can switch off the use layers. Okay, I want to limit the area to be machined to the neck only. So I draw a very simple freeform segment around this area that I want to have machined. Okay, here we are. Okay, uh, the cutter does not need to go outside this segment, so no extra. And here we are. Here is the sub-segment. Let me already calculate some toolpath. Those are not what we want, not yet, but we can see. Okay, so it go, goes far too deep, and also this ambient area here needs not, not be machined. Back to the operation parameters. For the sub-segment, I limit the Z to exactly halfway. And here in advanced, I can tell Desproto to skip this horizontal ambient area. Now the result already looks much better. Only the positioning toolpath here uh, are too much. The cutter can remain low. So one millimeter and always stay low. And then here are the waterline toolpath for the left side of the neck. Okay, I'll do the same for the uh, right side. I copy this part and here right side 
Yes, and now I need to add a 180 degree rotation in the uh, geometry in order to machine the other side. So here we can see what happens. Here is the left side and here is the right side. Obviously I also need to change the Z settings zero and let's see what happens when we calculate the toolpath here yes only this one okay here we are toolpath for the other side that will remove the undercut okay so and um, we can save these toolpath and now a next trick that i will want to explain is uh, about chaining we can combine these two operation in, operations in one single and C file by using chaining. And that's the one thing we need to do. And the other thing we need to do is make sure that the rotation axis is correctly rotated when we start this toolpath. Well, we can do both things here in, on an advanced uh, page with the start and commands. So I want to make sure that uh, before the operation, you know, before the toolpath for the operation are written uh, to the machine, that then in the NC file a command is given that rotates the A axis to zero degrees. And I also want to make sure that this rotation uh, won't cause any damages. So first I want my cutter to move up 50 millimeters so uh, uh, g1 movement to z50 and a g1 rotation movement to a0 will be written to my file and for chaining i want to chain this operation to a next one uh, to the right side and to operation chin okay here we are here we are and in this operation I also need to make these extra settings. Z axis again move up to 50 to a safety position that's needed to safely make this rotation to 180 degrees. So the command, the rotation command here, nicely matches the 180 degrees rotation as defined in the part parameters. Uh, no further chaining is needed, so okay, okay. Uh, that's about the before and after commands and about the chaining. Uh, one more thing that I want to show you, you can also see the chaining right here. So we made one chain and that chain contains both uh, chin operations, both uh, neck operations. So we're all set. I want to now save this NC file. Only uh, this, uh, I want to make, have a name first, chin, okay. Yes, only this operation, and then it will detect that this is part of a chain, and I say yes, I want to save the complete chain. And now finally the toolpath for the finishing operation. So for the smallest cutter, uh, we use a, use the two millimeter ball nose cutter. Here it is, the finishing operation. Let me check the settings, two millimeter position is okay. Strategy is okay. No roughing, 
The sub segment needs to be changed as I want the minimum Z to be a bit higher in order to avoid this vertical surfaces, surface just as we did for the semi finish operation. Borders okay, nothing needs to be done here. Here one thing is needed anyway, the call it collision check. It's needed for this operation as uh, my two millimeter ball nose cutter is the shortest of all. So it might well happen that for some steep vertical surface the chuck, so the ring that is used to clamp the cutter would damage the geometry. That's not what we want and that's why I check this uh, call it collision detection. It will take longer in the calculations but I just need it now. Uh, before I calculate one more thing that needs to be done which is the undercut area behind the ears as I want to remove the excess material there with the same small two millimeter ball nose. Well uh, repeating what happened for left side and right side I can now proceed without explaining too much. This new part will be called back side uh, a rotation of 90 degrees is needed. Let me check if that was the correct one. Yes, the back is now facing upwards. Uh, support, same supports as for the first part. And no translation for Y and Z. And as a result, my zero point will be at the same position as for the other parts. Here as well a dummy operation is needed as I do not want roughing layers. Dummy and in this operation all settings need to be done. Just proceeding quickly, two millimeter, a high precision, toolpath parallel to Y, no roughing is needed. For subsegment I need to draw two areas, the two ears, so just quickly two simple areas. Uh, uh, yes, here we are. Okay, uh, borders on no extra movement. Uh, yes, keep low for all positioning moves, advances, skip horizontal and vertical ambient. And of course, I shouldn't forget that we also need to make sure that before these toolpaths uh, start, the A axis rotates to its 90 degree position. And before that, I want to go to my safety position. Chaining is not needed here. Uh, I won't, will not change the ears to the rotary part as I want to be there when I start the ear project. Um, okay, now we are all set for this operation. Let's see what happens when we calculate the toolpath. Oh, that was a dummy operation. Here we are. And I still see vertical path here while we said skip vertical movement. That's because this is a multi diameter cutter. Uh, let's call it ears for more clarity. I can show that to you in the library of cutters what I mean. Here so the cutter that we use has two diameters here and Despro will also, also calculate toolpath for this sloped angle which obviously is not what we want but still it does. So I will get rid of these by making the minimum Z of my uh, subsegment a bit higher. Uh, so front view I pick up this one and anything below this level can be deleted. So here we are, this is better. So nicely the undercut area here will be machined. Well, here is a bit too much, so we can fine tune the subsegments. I just show you how it's done without. Obviously, you can do this in 
more detail, but it gives you an idea. And now the area that's machined is a bit smaller. So here we are. Um, I will now save the toolpath for the ears. Where is it? Yes, ears. Oh, it was already present. Yes, yes. And now we can proceed to the milling machine. result is this beautiful Nefertiti statue in wood. When machining on a larger size or with a smaller cutter, an even more detailed result is possible.